Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense. That no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. But when this rifle is the only thing standing between your family and a dozen angry Democrats in clan hoods, you just might need that semi-automatic in all 30 rounds. So that is a candidate for Congress who ran that ad, uh, Arizona Republican Jerome Davison. Utterly horrifying, utterly deranged, should disqualify him, almost certainly will make him more popular on the right. Everything that you just saw in that ad is utterly ahistoric, it's murderous, it's terrifying that a person could believe that, could believe that broadcasting those thoughts would help get them into office. And the most horrifying thing of all is the knowledge that he's probably right. And saying those insane things could actually help him. Um, but I want to jump ahead to one added bit of information before we discuss more. Because you might have seen that ad yesterday. And you might have thought that Jerome Davison uh, associating himself with that sort of imagery and that sort of message is uh, the most horrifying or weird thing about his candidacy. I'm not actually that sure. Because in the interim, we found out about his campaign manager, a guy named Austin Steinbart. And there's a lot to Austin Steinbart. Uh, he claims to be a time traveler from the future. He claims to be a deep cover agent for the DIA. He claims that he is Q from QAnon, not from Star Trek to be clear. He claims QAnon is a military intelligence operation that uses space age quantum technology to post messages from the future to internet forums in the present and calls himself baby Q by the way, isn't that adorable? But most importantly, is the guy that Jerome Davison chose to run his campaign. The guy who says he's a time traveling insane person is the guy Jerome Davison chose. And Jerome Davison knows this, he knows all the Q stuff. And he chose that person, Ben. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he could be a congressman. Good Lord, <laughs> oh my God. Like, like I'm actually really curious. I really want somebody to ask this guy like how he feels about people like Malcolm X in history. Like how he feels about like the Black Panthers, right? Um, Cause famously we know that Republicans loved the Black Panthers, right? Like that's what we know. That's that's the history that we're going with, right? Um, I can't like I can't even like this all like okay, but like this is the thing. Okay, like I, I guess I'll make, I'll make it serious for a second. A lot of people point to this and say, look at how ridiculous these people are. You know, they couldn't ever be effective at being like genocidal monsters, right? And a lot of people said this about Trump. They were like, oh, thank God he wasn't more effective. But the reality is. Right, Adolf, like Adolf Hitler was an absolute moron. Right, he was a clown. And like, li like literally everything that he said and did was like pathetic and clownish. Right, and all of the Nazis, once again, were weird clowns. Okay, people being weird clowns does not make them any less dangerous. Okay, people being weird clowns does not make them less dangerous. In fact, in some ways, it makes them more dangerous because when you're that disconnected from reality, you're willing to invent any type of scenario that justifies whatever violence you feel like doing, right? But if you live in the real world, you realize that all of those things are absurd and they're terrible, right? And they're monstrous, right? Yeah. But they don't live in the real world. <laughs> they don't live in the real world, you know? I mean, I don't. I don't even want to think anymore about the the idea, the fantasy that he has of tons of marauders storming across his well manicured lawn, and that he fantasizes about being able to gun down twelve people as they try to attack his house. Why are they attacking his house? God only knows. He doesn't seem to. Um, but he loves the idea that man, the right loves conjuring up a plausible excuse to start killing people. I mean, then I just go out randomly and kill someone. But if, oh God, if only this could be this certain way, and then, oh, it's justified for me to start murdering people. But again, the issue isn't just Jerome Davison. There's also this Austin Steinbart. And I know you might be thinking, oh, John, you told us all the crazy things about him. Uh uh, there's more. First of all, even with this being revealed, Jerome Davison is standing with him. He's standing with Baby Q. He says, Austin is my campaign manager. He claims that the left is so afraid of my campaign that they tried to force me to fire Steinbart. And he goes on to say, nobody puts baby Q in the corner. So he's not getting rid of him. 
Um, no, we're not afraid of your campaign, so we want you to fire him. First of all, I don't want you to fire him. I want you to not run. But if we did want you to fire him, it's because he's a legitimate insane person. Even the QAnon people think that this guy Austin Steinbar is insane. But he also has had some other issues. Uh, let's see, he was in legal trouble for hacking the medical records of celebrities while receiving treatment in a facility back in March of 2020. He pleaded guilty to one felony charge in 2021 and he was released from prison after spending 225 days there. Oh, Also, in September of 2020, he got in trouble after he was found to be using a fake penis or wizenator to avoid taking a routine drug test while out on pretrial bail. I didn't know that that was a thing, now that's a thing that's stuck in my brain. This is the guy that he chose to run his campaign. And look, I, I don't know how it's gonna shake out. We'll see what the primary, I think it's coming up within the next month. But like the Marjorie Green and the Lauren Boebert thing, as we've been saying now for a year and a half, there are people who are as crazy as them or crazier that under normal times wouldn't run for office. Or if they did, they wouldn't have any chance. But now they see, no, there's no bottom to that barrel. You can be, you should be that crazy to have a chance of breaking through. And now, what do you know? The next set of primaries, there's a lot of people who are arguably as dangerous or more dangerous than Marjorie Green running. And this guy is definitely one of them. Any other thoughts, Ben? Um, yeah, I don't know. These are just really dangerous times. These are just really dangerous times. And I think every time I see stuff like this, my first thought is just, to think about the fact that the Democrats are basically doing nothing about it. And they keep talking about bipartisanship, right? They keep yeah. talking about like, how do we compromise with these people? I don't, <laughs> you just don't, <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to take these people seriously. Um, in fact, it's better if you don't, right? It's better if these people are laughed at, if they're called losers, if they're called pathetic dweebs and everybody laughs at them. That is the best reaction, right? To make people embarrassed to say things like this in public. Um, yeah. Yeah, or at least to believe that there's no chance that it could work. That he could run that ad, sure, and no one would vote for him. But that's not the country we live in. We're, we're gonna be following it. There's no guarantee that he's gonna win, but I bet he's not gonna get 300 votes. I bet he's gonna do pretty well for himself. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.